I don't care who my first celebrity crush was, because right now it's Kendall Jenner. This is what I, hate. I did Warped Tour. He's would wear comfortable shoes on stage every day. <laughs> you said to me, You smell like weed. And I said, I am weed. I don't know. Count down the days until she's 18. I'm not waiting until she's 18. I'll go now. Your fing Nike New Balance fing comfy <laughs> shoes because it makes you feel comfortable. We're talking yeah, about Harry mother Potter. Yes. Don't think that but I'm not tapped in. Man, I'm 23, bro. She's 17 and she's like a celebrity. Like, there, there's no. There is no limits right there. Put on some Doc Martens, you <laughs> Put on some Chucks. Put on some Vans. Our first date, we breathed each other. That was all we did. Mm. Robert Plant <laughs> dated a girl that was 14. Axl Rose <laughs> dated a girl that was 16. Like, it's not about you. It's about the show. Seriously, what's the deal with this guy? This individual, if you don't already know, is 31-year-old musician Colson Baker aka Machine Gun Kelly. Today, I just want to talk about whatever's going on here, because something is definitely going on here. The first time MGK was relatively big in the cultural zeitgeist, it was 10 years ago in 2012 with the release of his debut album, Lace Up. At this point in his very young career, I feel like the vibe around him was that of rebellious party music for frat bros and rednecks. His closest thing to a mainstream hit was called Wild Boy, which featured Waka Flocka Flame and the infamous hook of yeah bitch, yeah bitch, call me steve-o i'm a wild boy i'm a i'm a wild boy not to say that i think this song was good by any means but i was more indifferent to him back in the day than i am now it was dumb and kind of fun almost bordering on being a novelty song the hook was pretty catchy waka was basically the king of loud trap bangers at the time so his inclusion definitely helped but in general he was just another mediocre white guy finding success in hip-hop because he's a white guy in hip-hop. He was corny for sure, don't get me wrong, but compare him to a few people also on that year's extremely cursed XXL freshman list, and it seemed like there were bigger fish to fry at the time. More annoying people to make fun of. Meanwhile, MGK was kind of niche doing this nonconformist rock star aesthetic, and he seemed happy in his own lane, until he wasn't. Here is the origin story of one of the funniest feuds in recent memory. In 2012, during MGK's heyday, he tweeted, Okay, so I just saw a picture of Eminem's daughter, and I have to say, she is hot as f in the most respectful way possible, cause Em is king. Oh, and pss, pss. In case you're wondering, at the time, Machine Gun Kelly was 22, and Eminem's daughter was 16 years old. So the whole MGK openly having a thing for underage girls happened on more than one occasion. But uh, moving on. Years later, around the time of his second album dropping, in a 2015 radio interview, MGK claimed that this tweet got him blacklisted from a bunch of radio stations, which is hilarious because there are only really two outcomes. One, he's right, and him being very creepy got him less play on the radio, which, sure, or two, MGK's openly admitting to not being popular anymore, and he's deciding to blame it on this tweet instead of the more realistic reasons of you fell off, you're not very talented, people don't really like you, etc, etc. Two more years go by, and in 2017, Mr. Colson Baker continues this one-sided feud by freestyling about Eminem during a radio appearance and rapping about how he got banned from Shade 4-5, still referencing this tweet from five years ago. And yet again, one year later in 2018, MGK is featured on Tech 9 song No Reason, and he raps that Eminem's gonna need a doctor and not the one from Compton, referencing Eminem's song I Need a Doctor and his mentor Dr. Dre, and then, to remind y'all, you just rap, you're not gods, referencing Eminem's song Rap God. After six long years of this man doing the whole please notice me shtick, Eminem, an actual rap legend, responds to someone definitely not worth his time in the song Not alike, with a long, detailed verse dissing MGK. And this really should have been the end of it, but Machine Gun Kelly releases an entire diss track called Rap Devil, and then M puts the nail in the coffin with his own diss track, Killshot, 
which regardless of Eminem not being as good as he used to be, he went crazy on this, and it was absolutely brutal. Stan, Stan, son, listen man, dad isn't mad, but how are you gonna name yourself after a damn gun and have a man bun? With your corny lines, Slim, you're old, ow, Kelly, ooh, but I'm 45 and I'm still outselling you. By 29, I had three albums that blew. Got more fans than you in your own city, Lil Kitty, go play. I feel like I'm babysitting Lil Tay. This is it, as big as you're gonna get, so enjoy it. I had to give you a career to destroy it. One of my more divisive videos is about white rappers and how 99% of them profit by utilizing this culture and genre without showing any respect for it. In many ways, they pick and choose hip-hop characteristics to help launch their careers because they have a near-guaranteed fan base, and then they're free to do whatever they want after they get big. And isn't it funny that when Eminem destroyed MGK on Killshot, this dude eventually quit rap and decided to make the world's lamest pop punk instead. How do you get dissed out of an entire genre? So we've got initial relevance due to his own privilege, pathetically trying to get attention from someone that heavily influenced his music and doing so over and over again, and then completing the ultimate exploitation move by using this newfound fame that you got from being publicly embarrassed and flipping it into a different lane where guess what? Nobody likes or respects him either. Slipknot Corey Taylor said, I hate the artists who failed in one genre and decided to go to rock, and I think he knows who he is. To which MGK, of course, had a very mature response to someone who, like Eminem, is much more experienced and renowned in their respective genre than he is. Hey, you wanna know what I'm really happy that I'm not doing? Being 50 years old, 50 years old, wearing a fucking weird mask on a fucking stage. <laughs> Since 2020's appropriately titled Ticket to My Downfall, this year's mainstream sellout, and his uncomfortable, mind-blowing relationship with Megan Fox, seriously, what are you doing with this dude? He has become this leech, feeding off of any ounce of fame he can get with no dignity or pride whatsoever. His latest cringeworthy track to go viral is called Emo Girl, and the whole reason it's going around is that people are making fun of it. Anytime I see him online, there are comments echoing my own thoughts that say, whenever I see this guy, it's involuntary, and I couldn't agree more. If he's not what many people would call an industry plant, then what is it? I haven't seen a positive comment about him since 2012, and yet he's huge right now. The push he's getting from his label, or whatever you want to say is fueling this, is astonishing. Lately I've seen musicians that I actually enjoy posting the festivals that they're performing at, and I feel like I'm losing my mind when I see who's headlining. Lollapalooza, Bonnaroo, Oshiega, who is putting Machine Gun Kelly next to Dua Lipa, and Stevie Nicks, Doja Cat, and Lil Baby? What is going on? Who's behind this? I go to the movies to see the new Jackass, I'm loving it, and then this buzzkill shows up, and I literally hear people in the audience groaning. I scroll down TikTok, and I see him, a 31-year-old man, whining about people saying that he's not really emo. Emo, 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 emo! You wanna know how extreme this has gotten? I've seen a few videos about the new WWE wrestling video game, saying that it's good and a lot of fun, I go to research it to see if I want to get it, and I find out that they're putting Machine Gun Kelly in this game. I really can't escape this guy. And the moral of the story here is, all that glitters is not gold. If you're not content with your level of celebrity, really think about it if you're dying to extend that 15 minutes of fame. It's like that quote from Batman, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, except it's, you either become moderately successful appropriating a culture that you clearly don't believe in, or you grift hard enough to make everybody see how truly unlikable and untalented you really are. In conclusion, MGK sucks, and if he really does have 20 million monthly listeners on Spotify, it's a perfect example of how so many people out there don't actually listen for the music, they're just clicking on whatever name is making headlines at a given time. Hey, thank you for watching that video. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.